fast forward, we're in a hole that's up to my knees and start filling water because there's a creek next to it. And we were down, we had to use a cigarette. We went and got a backhoe. Backhoe. And the backhoe driver was smoking a cigarette. We had to dig we told it. He didn't look at We told him, said, don't look at what's coming out of the hole. Just concentrate on this. Just scoop where you take the scoop. He did like lots of things. He's lighting a cigarette with a cigarette. He sees me pull a leg out. And I'm like, Quinn, hold that. Oh, you well, we oh, hold that. 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 Hold did you have nightmares? Or no. did they make you sick afterwards? Not nightmares, yeah. right? And that's for the next so fifteen years. So how do you protect your spirit from that? That's what we you know what have to do. Stay spiritual no. on this. We work for the family. If you and cry, you, you got to die. Mind, and we know that we're working for them. We can't like that's like you know that's like a soldier like a having to do something to save his troops. You got to or your son. It's the mamas. The mamas keep you straight. So whoever raised him, the grandmama, the mama, you have a connection with her. She keeps you straight. So you have to hug, touch and agree this is wrong. And there's your strength. That's been mine all the time. Mama can call me 3 o'clock in the morning 10 years after the murder because that's the connection we made. They looked at us like we were crazy. We came to this unit. Everybody was smoking and drinking scotch by 3 o'clock. We was in this because we believed in our community. I love Atlanta. And the fact that we were able to go out here and be with these families, and it's the family of the accused too. They losing too. That was the thing because that sister whose son got charged this year, next year she got a baby, might get killed off a school bus. So Look, we were just we in trial two weeks ago, and it's a case that we're sitting in trial on sentencing day. I go in there, and this guy was trying to get in touch with me. He's like, Quinn, where's your partner? Where's your partner? I finally show up. I handled his sister's murder in 2002. He's the uncle of this victim. I had no idea. So I'm back with his family now again. 2002, 2000, 2012. And, and on the show, we incorporate at least one family member on each episode. And so sometimes they want us to actually sit in the studio with them while they're giving this, because it's, it's a rendering, it's a healing for them, because it never goes away. And, and there's a, a level of trust that they have. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and all the cameras and stuff. You, you, become, you become the surrogate family member, because you, you almost replace that person, because you're the conversation that they had. The mother says, what's going on with my daughter's case. You almost become the daughter because now you're talking about the daughter as if you know her. And you, we always, we don't say the victim, if her name was Nicole. Right. We say, listen, I'm working hard for Nicole and you and your family. And they appreciate that. Yeah, so absolutely. police officers now in this climate, like they, the, the relationship, as you guys have explained, is flawed. What can they do to kind of reverse this mentality and start... You know what I'm saying? Connecting with the community again. What would you suggest that police officers they gotta do put now? Cops back out there on foot. They got to get them out those cars. They have a set. I mean, I look at police cars now, and there's tinted glass on them. They say that's for protection. That is, you're creating a barrier. You don't have to look at what you're serving. Mm. It's service. That's what it is. Right. I got the tattoo of one of my victims on my arm, his skull, a little boy that was missing because. I connected. That's the way I was dealing with the thing. A little boy was missing for 10 years. His grandmother went to the movies. Anyway, he got murdered. So when I retired, I put his skull. It's episode two of the show. We talk about that and show it. Alan Watson. I, Alan Watson. And I, I, I just, I see these cops pushing further and further away from the community. Do, do, you, do you feel that some of them look at it as, as a job? What you guys are looking at, it, you're saying service. You're 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 wanting to change. It's in your heart. You should never Homicide become a cop if you want a job. That's the, you know if you want a job, a job is a transition to a career. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is. This is a this is a position that you help. You know you're serving the community. And you're, and it's like a pastor. Right? right. You have to. Right. You have a responsibility, and that's what we tell people. We've told so many people. Say, hey man. This may not be for you. You may want to think about doing something else. Because if you can't, and it's not like you got to be like us. That's not what we're expecting. But right. if you can just do the minimum, like you said, what can you do to connect with the community? It's tell people your first name. Give your cell phone number. Right. We never let people call us Detective Quinn and Detective Velasquez. They call us Quinn and Vince. What's Everybody so, in the street call us that. What, what is the source of all this quote unquote crime? Like, what's happening in our communities that people are like cutting people up and shooting people down and stealing babies? What are we not doing why, in our why, yeah, why Well, we're trying to right. gentrify what, what historically black neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing across the country. Yeah. We are gentrifying and we're pushing out these historically black neighborhoods. We're running up the tax dollars. So this sister that was a teacher for 40 years, she's got to move to a high rise. That's what's up. And so if you don't, if you understand what's really going on in the hood right now, 
Th therein lies the respect. Mm -hmm. But it's a gangster mentality what's going on in America. So now. there's a lot of lacks, basically. There's yeah. a, lot, well, a lot of lacks of economic growth and, yes. and provi well, this yes. provisions for Look, look at this. Okay, here's a perfect example. When's the last time you seen a Starbucks in a black neighborhood? It's very simple. But there's definitely liquor stores. Well, on and then guess yeah. what? There's a wire transfer store there, right? There's mm -hmm. a rim shop, right? Yep. So here's my thing, right? Okay. And a church. And a church. And you got a gas station that doesn't have security, and there's people getting killed and robbed yeah, and carjacked over there, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're wondering why is that happening there? Well, where are the resources going? Right. And here's another thing. The city of Atlanta has a thing called Vic cameras. If you ever see a little blue light under a telephone pole yeah, yeah. camera, the city of Atlanta owns those, right? Go up Peace Street Street and see in Buckhead and see many of those a cameras you see. Yeah. But go down to Bankhead or Hollywood, right, road and see how many you see. Zero. Why is that? Right, that's the problem. So if you want to talk about holistically, what you know, we can start getting out of our cars, but the city, the government has, to, has to invest to get out. in that community. So they're, so they're trying to glor. Okay, wait a minute. So they, the cameras are there to catch the crime, so that it is uh, yes, available for, for television and, and for to help and law media. enforcement. Right, and law enforcement. He's a law enforcement camera. The crime, like if a crime occurs, he can go back to the camera. But, okay. but it's not down to the bucket. So. Like crimes gonna go on in the it's not in some of the it's right. Oh, you said it's not in our right. area. Right. Right. It, 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 it is somewhat of a deterrent too. So if there's a camera there and people are like selling drugs or so, doing something, they may not do that there. They may move away and do something right. yeah. in some other place. Yeah. But it's where the taxpayers are, are paying the bills, right? So you're like, who are you really serving? Well, we all have to pay taxes. We all pay but taxes, pay but taxes. you know what I'm saying? There's not as much right. what's, the, what's the tax base, right? So you have a rental community that's predominantly in the Hispanic and black neighborhoods. Okay. And you have home ownership that's predominantly in the white neighborhoods. Right. right. So where's the stronger tax base? In the where, homeowner. Where are they right. putting well, their Well, they kick in. Their, their neighborhood, uh, neighborhood committees kick in and give money, you know, and so that's why you get all the camera. All their stuff is footage, whatever it is. I, I don't have the answer. I mean, honestly, if I had the answer, I'd run well, I, 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 well, so, make some changes. Well, but. I, I do know something that you probably will have the answer to. It's my next question. What is the protocol or the process? We know that you go to the police academy. We know uh, that there's tons of tests, physical tests, uh, uh, um, intellectual tests. What are you doing mentally? What is happening mentally for police officers before they're actually able to, to graduate and move on to the next level as a, police, as a policeman? We came on, we were evaluated. Mm -hmm. Psychiatric. Psychiatric. Yeah, it lasted, I mean, they would play with you make you wait for your appointment for six hours just to see if you could handle it. was on purpose. We didn't know when I was 20 years old. Right. I'm waiting for a psychologist to come in, you know, for six hours. They want to see if you're going to get up and go. There's the little telltale signs where they can say, I'll let him hit the road. road. Right. Hit, hit but, rocks. If you're a narcissist, if you're like, you know, borderline, borderline psycho, personality right, disorder, you're, right, sociopath, right, which that narcissism mm -hmm. goes mm -hmm. hand in hand with yeah. that, right? Yeah. It's easy for you to hide that. We know that from working homicide. I was also... Uh, one of the lead negotiators for the city for my entire career. I was the negotiator. So the mentality and the mental aspect of dealing with people like that, cops who can hide that mask, that get in, right? It's the same. We were talking to one of your one of your producers here. What do cops do when somebody pushes back and says, "No, I want to see your ID. I'm not showing you my ID." That's where that see that's where things start to get out of hand. Right? I'm gonna say this. Well, I, have, I, have to run. Run. Yeah, I was gonna say. So so okay, let's let's talk a little bit about that now. All right, we we see that a lot of Caucasian people will say, I'm not I'm not giving you my I'm not showing right. you my ID. Why are you pulling right. me? Why did right. you pull me? Right. I mean, they are defiant in the oh, sense. Oh yeah, they want you to put them on the ground. However, it does not happen. It doesn't translate. It, it does not. America. It, it, they are not. Uh, the, the police officer is not receiving them as they would an African American. American person. does the same thing. The minute that's, we question anything, mm -hmm. then now that's it's oh, um, you know, you, you're being this is obstruction and you're being belligerent and irate, and then you're you're before you know you, you're getting the charge. Right? You know, Why this, is that? this even transcends racial barriers amongst police officers because you see black cops doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the culture of police, and then if you break that down just a little bit more, then you get to the racial side of things. The guy, the white dude that grew up in Iowa, has never been around black. Puerto Rican, Hispanic people, and now you throw them into a city like Chicago, Atlanta, Philly, New York, right? It's fear. It's well, fear I, 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 and afraid. And you know what? Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you what let I you come on board. The biggest where, problem where I have been? now right. is where you they're allowing well, the police hey, department to say, I was here. Fear in my life, they're far too. It's hard to recruit. I don't believe in it. So they got to fill the ranks, and they don't always have That's one of the... That's so crazy, because in the movie, that is an actual line that we have to talk, that was a whole scene that talked about how there's fear, that there is fear inside of the actual, and it, and it was talking about how 
one of the, they, the police officers were sitting around talking. They asked, him, why did you become a police officer? And he said, well, um, I couldn't carry a, a concealed weapon because I was charged for a mental, uh, um, he was charged for a mental disorder. So in order for him to be able to um, carry a weapon because he was in fear of his life, because he was fearful, he went and got. Um, he went and got a part of the. Became a part of the police wow, that's, academy. That's, they that's, allowed him so, to be a part of the police the academy problem. beyond that's his I, mental disorder. I have to ask you this question. So Just so you carry a concealed weapon legally. What, what, what is what is the thought process when you go from mm -hmm. when you stop mm -hmm. someone? And it goes from zero to a hundred immediate meaning zero to dead. Like what? You can't just say, "Hey, stop or shoot to stop," opposed to shooting to kill. Well, like what is that training? They only teach you to kill. They don't teach you to. But wound. why? Why can't you I, just take the person down to baby talking? Because we're at the tail end of that shoot right. to kill more often. I can only speak from the old days. Like mm -hmm. I said, I came on in 1985, mm -hmm. and if you shot anybody running, that was your ass. It was a wrap for you. You tackled. You did what you had to do. Sometimes you took somebody took a beating, but then we didn't kill, we didn't shoot people because we're afraid. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't even put in the paperwork, I shot them because I was afraid. I shot them because they were trying to kill me. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just the whole thing, I'm in fear. So a car is backing up and you, the officer has a place to go. This is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm only giving you my opinion. He has a place he can exit and get up out of there. I'm going to hold my ground because you're backing up this stone. I'm going to shoot you because I can't shoot a car. I don't under, I'll never understand that. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, before I left, before we left, they uh, passed that job over to the GBI. Because I think you should be charged. If you have a way to get, you don't know what's in this youth's head or this person. You don't know what they're going through. So fear is, is relative to like somebody says, well, I'm in fear because what he considers fear, I consider fear, maybe not be the same. But yes. there's the law. You got to follow the law. Like you can't just shoot somebody because... You know, you punch you in the face. How well, do you articulate that, right? Apparently you can't. Well, you well, should be indicted by, well, you know, lastly, by a jury if what, you do that. In, in, in closing, what is, the what is supposed to be the police's... Um, Response? Uh, no, the, the, the thesis of what police policing is. Is it offense or is it defense? It's it's a it's it's a combination of both. So an offensive strategy would be yes. how do we combat crime? How do we make a community safer? Right. So you got to take some offensive steps. You got to do mm -hmm. something to like mitigate that crime. Right. On the defensive side, you know, there's a man living today in 1997 fighting him, dislocated my shoulder. To this day, I've had three two surgeries. I have to have a shoulder replacement. My arm is stuck above my head, and behind my back. I couldn't bring it down. He saw that. He tried to take my gun out of my holster. Now, was I in fear of my life? You better believe it, but that man's alive. Doesn't mean I couldn't have shot him. If he stepped coming, I was able to get my gun out. But I was able to control whatever I could and get him on the ground and not have to hurt him. So fear, so that a defensive, to answer your question, the defensive side of that thing is, you know, we want to go home too. Right. You know, people are, there are people, are bad people that want to hurt us. I mean, mm -hmm. there's just people out there that, that want an opportunity to do that. And we got to be aware of it. Me and this guy would be in, in the bluff or any neighborhood in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and we'd have drug dealers. I can see he's got a gun on. I can see it. I'm like, hey, man, what you carrying? He's like, oh, man, it's a Glock just like yours. Now, this is going to sound crazy, no, no. right? That mutual respect, you know, we have tools that we carry. They have tools they carry. We're not there for him. We're there because we want to know who killed the dude got in a yellow him. house. Help us out. I'm not condoning what he's doing, but right. there's a, there's yeah, a natural right. law that, hey, man, look, be safe. And he might be legal. He tells us right. the same thing. Well, no, and these are people we know. Oh, these people we know. It's all about service. Yeah. No matter what you try to, you know, what we try to do with this and try to dissect it, they have to figure out other ways of getting this done. The us against them is not mm -hmm. working. Mm -hmm. The one thing I can say, Chief Erica Shields, you know, I didn't even know this sister before, you know, just before she became chief personally. I retired after 30 years. I was doing this thing. Me and Vinny were going to do our show thing. She asked me to come back under contract to coach these young police detectives on how to talk to people mm -hmm. in real time. Respect. Yeah. That's, That's time. never been done. Mm -hmm. It was under Kasim Reed. I know he's getting a lot of flack right now, but it was his plan was to idea. bring in old cats to teach these youngins how to talk to my people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I do yeah. under so contract. That's, that, that's, that was my favorite last week. There's respect. a lack of respect for authority on both, on both sides. Ends. And on they both take sides. my word for it. I mean, I got no, I'm not trying to make, I'm, I'm retired. I get a check. <laughs> so, <laughs> they try to I, die. So, I, so I coach them in real time on a daily basis. You know, I go up and I say, look, this is what you need to do, and you know. And, and ultimately, that will save lives. Yeah. Well, yeah. we we it's want to thank you guys for you, being you. part we of our social media, part of our show. Yes. The information is so important, yeah. and I and I hope that 
you know, when people see this, that they can get a better understanding of what we should be doing as a whole, as a community. Watch ATL Homicide, Mondays 9 p.m. Eastern. 10, 10, 10, 10, 9 Central. 10, 9 Central. Oh my God. 10, it's, 10 going, it's, it's lit. Oh, I already see it's lit. <laughs> 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 